Munchfig, I think, just last, well, yesterday or what? Yeah. Did you just shave yesterday? Yeah. After yeah. a long time yeah. of not yeah. shaving. Yeah. So, he's yeah. naked. I was trimming yeah. my beard and it got out of control. Yeah, it totally got out Basically, of control. Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, my name is Dodo. And my last name is Kiss. And yeah, anyway, so I'm a recorder player, iwi player, sometimes a composer, sometimes not, <laughs> and improviser. I'm a Mishvik John Mifzolu. I'm a Guitar player, sound maker, person, uh, composer also, sometimes, occasionally, and uh, enjoyer of um, La Chouf. <laughs> now, okay, it's pronounced Hold Udvar. Okay, it was, when was that? Uh, I think two years ago, three years ago? More. That we needed to sort know, of come maybe, up with the best. Yeah. Oh, because we also had the, the, the smoking... What was the Smoking hazard. We had this piece, Smoking Hazard, and uh, which was a cool piece. I think yeah. it was pretty cool. Yeah. And for that performance, we wanted to come up with a band name, and we were just thinking, and we couldn't really come up with anything. And in, this is a word in Hungarian, and it means the the that little area around the... Okay, if you look at the moon and the moonlight, but, Full you moon. know, that... But that that circle of extra light, you know, it's not the moon anymore, but but it shines up on in the sky. So that's the halo around the moon. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Anyway, so <clears throat> that that is what it means, and it's super cheesy if you would say that in English or any language that everybody understands. So we just thought, I wish we thought that it should be in Hungarian. So that's it. But this, let's say it's a working title. <laughs> yes. Yes. First of all, we are Facebook friends for six years. One of these days. Two days ago. Two days ago. It, it was okay. six But years really, ago. because I think, yeah, that's kind of accurate because we yeah, had each other much. on Facebook because yeah. we wanted to keep touch, keep in touch. Yeah, it should be about now. Yes. So anyway, it was like six years ago that mm. we met. And soon-ish after that, we started, um, well, we were doing some electronics um, pieces with live electronics with my trio, Oxalot. And uh, and it was just, Mishwick was nice and we thought that we would ask him to... To help us. Yeah, and, that was um, the first thing. Yeah? That was the Space first Odyssey. thing, actually, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then uh, we thought that we would, uh, we just want to do something one on one. So mm -hmm. we started playing together, improvising. And back then, I think you were doing much more with like Ableton Live yes. and Max, Max MSP. More so more like the electro controllers. Expert. Bzzz, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. For Before that. that, we did my uh, final exam. We had a piece um, ah, for my final yeah. exam yeah, where yeah, we yeah. for my bachelor final exam. I was playing Iwi. Uh, that's an um, abbreviation for electric wind instrument, uh, which I also use in Jerboa and also in uh, well in Axolot and in well improv stuff and also with Mushfi. So we. For example, it's a it's a wind instrument, and but we made this patch that I could actually play drums on it. Since it's MIDI based, you can load into it any kind of sounds that you like, and uh, that was really fun to become a percussion instrument. But you know, as a if you have any kind of wind instrument, you are always some sort of a melody. But then I was playing drums, and that was fun. And you were doing the leap motion, yeah, which is the the hand sensor camera tracking thingy. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was very fun. weird. That was really weird. That was quite weird. <laughs> I think over time we kind of simplified things more because back then we were dealing more with technology and how to make this system work and that. Yeah. So now it's way more simple. And tonight's thing is actually more free impro than before ever. Actually, this is like the fully impro set we're going to do. Yeah. And we did like the first session that we were pre preparing for this tonight's uh, event was just two microphones and a little uh, overdrive pedal for the guitar. So no electronics really, you know, just amplification. And that was interesting because then we could, you know, the, the song, sounds we wanted to hear normally with electronics, we just kind of sang into the microphone. And it was, I think... 
you know, yeah, it's not the it best sounding yeah, thing, but true. I think for like the expression yeah. of improv, I think that's way more organic in some sense. So then we added two multi effects pedal boards, but it's still yeah. pretty simple yeah. compared to. That's true. Past. I think before we were trying to be like, um, okay, this is the technology that we have at our. Uh, what was the word? At, uh, at your dispose? disposal. Disposal, that's the one. So we have all this technology at our disposal, and how shall we use it? And as opposed to what do we want to hear? But that's just something that I think is, well, yeah, I guess it was necessary to go through that process. Yeah. That now it was more like, okay, we want to hear this, and what do we, what is the absolute minimum technology that we need to make that happen? So it's the other way around. Exactly. Now, yeah. yeah. And it's nice yeah. because. Yeah, okay, since my that um, time with the motion sensor and with the drum ewe thing, we also did, like, we had some actual songs, like, that you could call, yeah, like, like a singer-songwriter-ish yeah. songs. We had a few of those, very heartbreaking, cheesy romantic, stuff. a bit cheesy. Beautiful stuff. Yes. <laughs> but then, and then again into abstract stuff and trying to do math core, I guess, we tried, but we tried. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That was interesting. That was yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so now it's more, yeah, it's really, we, we wanted to narrow down or pin down some material, but in the end it was like, it's not necessary. Let's just do, use this tonight as a, yeah, improv. But we, we know each other's playing, so it's, yeah. it's not the same as when you are just thrown together with yeah. somebody, but it's still full on improvisation for tonight. Well, I mentioned already Jerboa, so I'm also one of the members of Jerboa, and, uh, which is also featured this evening. And uh, a number of people from Jerboa and Mishvik as well, we are renting this place called Ear, which is uh, in Amsterdam North, a rehearsal studio, um, which is, uh, we, we co-own it with a new ensemble, an Amsterdam-based contemporary music uh, ensemble, chamber orchestra, I shall say. And um, yeah, we just love this space and we are making it more and more our own and we are starting this series. And we are investing a lot of time and energy into making it really cozy, also very functional, but also cozy and also that we can host these events here. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a great journey, actually. It's, um, yeah, I feel like more and more at home here. So it's not, I also had some other studio spaces before where it was always a drag to having to go there and yeah. then rehearse. But here I just, I'm, I just can't wait to come here <laughs> and play. And it's a lot of work, but it's, it's, it's really, really worth it. So, yeah, hopefully this will grow all the more in the future. Yeah, it feels like an uh, accumulation accumulation of Sorry. all these years that we work together and we work with other people and we have this network yeah. of people we had worked with and friends and all that. And now this feels like it's becoming the base for that to really expand. Yeah. Blossom. Blo I was going to say, something. I was going to say Blossom. Well, yeah, anyway, so all the Jerboa related people or Oxalot and with Mishvik, we, we have, like, this is sort of the core, but then we also have little, not just little, but a lot of extra people, like, you can go, you know, further and yeah. further away in this circle, and somehow this this is the center of everything right now, and it feels really, really good and, and solid, and, yeah, it will remain, I think, remain in this way, I think, and we just... Yeah, so it's good. It's good. We put that in. <laughs> put that somewhere. I have a great ear story. Yes, yes. Can she has a great ear story. Okay. It's uh, you should really listen to this. Like she. Yeah. Should, okay. I don't think I. Told she should you. really tell this story. <laughs> okay. It's so uh, check it out. Check yeah, it so out. it's not really. Uh, yeah. So my ears are. I think that my ears are reasonably uh, sized compared to the rest of my face. So I'm, I'm not unhappy with them, but that's that. Now the ear story. So when I was in first grade, that is, in Hungary at least, you're age six. <laughs> yeah, you just heard. So I was, we had this afternoon class or whatever, when you just finish your homework. And then I was quicker done with it than the rest of the people, so I was super bored. And what I did to entertain myself at the age of six or seven is to make little, like, balls of uh, handkerchief and then put it in my, ma uh, in my mouth, <laughs> sorry, in my ear. And, and I would just take it out, whatever. Kids do, kids do weird things, right? So sure. I was doing it, and then one of these pieces of, um, of bowl of 
handkerchief got stuck in my ear and I couldn't take it out. And I was trying the whole afternoon through to get it out and I couldn't. And then I went home and I kept on trying and I didn't dare to say it to my mom. But then, and, and then I just, yeah, I just, I don't know why I didn't tell it to her. Anyway, so then I just forgot about it eventually. And then time went by. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so time went by. And next part of the story is that I'm 13 and I went swimming with a friend of mine into a swimming pool. Just, you know, I went swimming in the meantime as well. But so we went swimming and then. And I had this incredible ear pain afterwards, and it wouldn't go, I wouldn't, yeah, it just didn't want to go away, and it was super irritating, so we went to the ear, nose, doctor, blah, blah, person, and then they just said, yeah, there's a big piece of wax in my ear, so they're going to, you know, do, take it out with the pressure of water or something, clean it. But then this really big chunk came out, and we were both looking at it with the doctors, like, what, what is this really wax? Can it be that big? And then I sort of started to take it apart, and it was that piece of like six seven year old piece of handkerchief with covered in wax and so i yeah that's my ear story do not put stuff in your ears <laughs> <Do not. laughs> it's unbelievable that that was there for so long um i have a ear story also um <laughs> so last summer i started diving scuba diving and then you make this uh, connection with your ears it's more about the pressure balancing pressure outside and inside um, so, you know, you start doing this as a rookie, it's kind of tricky at first, and then you push yourself and you don't do it properly. Um, and it, after one week, I had this barotrauma, as they call it, I think, this uh, trauma on my eardrums, because uh, they were too flexing all the time. So also my hearing, it affected my hearing a bit. Huh. Like I would, during the day, I would kind of like have a low pass filter in my earring and I would go like <coughs> and it would go like <coughs> and it would open up and mm-hmm. stuff so yeah ears do not put stuff in your ears and watch out for the pressure I'd say mm-hmm. and ears are great ears are also. so great ears are oh great. my god ears are so good 